Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Tonight we have a late night insight on a very expensive uh, pure parfum version, discontinued basically because Ensar does very limited batches. Um, and this was a very limited batch of one of his very popular oud oils, which came out, I want to say like five to ten years ago, or maybe they started it ten years ago and, and it ran till about five years ago. I'm not 100% sure. But uh, the name of this one is Oud Yusuf. Okay, so first thing is that uh, I have to say thank you to my good friend Hari, who um, sent me a bunch of samples, and this was one of them. And this is actually a very rare, expensive, hard-to-find Oud oil, so I'm very grateful for you, Hari, sending this to me, um, because I love doing these type of reviews. As you guys know, one of the sort of, um, I would say, uh, advantages of my channel or one of my favorite things about my channel is that I can go anywhere in the fragrance world that I want. That includes cheapies, that includes most expensive fragrances, it includes ouds, it includes vintage, it includes designer, it includes niche. And so today, for example, I reviewed one of my favorite vintage perfumes, YSL's Jazz, which you can go check out if you'd like, if you like my vintage Hall of Fame reviews. Uh, and today we're reviewing a very expensive oud oil. So I kind of go all over the place. Um, and I think that, uh, it gives me sort of a broader view of the fragrance world than most people who focus on like oud or vintage or designer or niche or whatever you want to call it, right? So, um, I really enjoy that part of reviewing these fragrances for you guys. So, oud Yusuf is instantly, I knew exactly what this was when I smelled it and I've worn it on my skin a couple times now. This is the third time I've worn it to bed. I have not worn it as my scent of the day, um, but I've worn this to bed uh, three times now, okay? So this is the third time. And you can see he gave me a pretty generous sample. There's still some left for me to enjoy after this review. Um, but uh, basically, this is um, one of those oud fragrances that many people in the community love. And a lot of people sort of say very similar things about oud Yusuf. That's a cuddly, lovable, sort of easy to wear, starter oud, if you will. Um, and, and this oud, the very first thing that popped into my head whenever I smelled this is that this oud, uh, is one of those ouds that sort of makes the example where people say, you know, how oud can smell like anything. Russian Adam says all the time, oud can smell like anything. It can smell like vanilla ice cream. It can smell like flowers. It can smell like spices. It can smell like wood. It can smell like all, you know, uh, fruits and all this kind of stuff. And so the reason uh, that this fragrance, I think, appeals to so many people is that when many people start their oud journey, if you will, if that's a thing, right, they start with something like this, right, Versace Porom Oud Noir, or they start with Tom Ford Oud Wood, or something like that, right, and then they go, you know what, I'm going to go to the next level, and they go and get something like this, which is a Dior Leather Oud, it's seven, eight times more expensive than the Versace, um, and, and yet still maybe they think, you know what, there's there's more to be had. So they go and they get something like this, Amoir Silver Oud, which these fragrances are all fragrances that I love. Or they go, you know what, I'm going to go to Roja because that's one of the high-end brands. And they get something like this. This is uh, H the Exclusive Black Tier, which I'm going to review very soon. Um, but none of them, I think, scratch the itch, right? None of those ouds scratch the itch of a true oud head. Once you get into brands like this, Ensar Oud, right? Or a Riz La Dore, or Bortnikoff, or Rising Phoenix, or something like that, right? Now you're in the realm of the real artisanal ouds, okay? Also, you could go with something like Sultan Pasha. This is Ensar Rose, which I'm going to try to review these Sultan Pashas one day because they are out of this world. Unbelievable. I don't... I don't think I'll be able to do them justice, but damn it, I'm going to try. Uh, I think if I was an Atar guy, I think I would just wear Sultan Pasha Atars. Like, they're the best I've ever smelled. So, um, Oud Yusuf is sort of this, in this artisanal Oud category, okay? But um, I think that once most folks get into the artisanal Oud category, if you will... If you've gone through those progressions and then you make it to the artisanal oud category, I think you will begin to sort of understand what oud Yusuf is. But many who maybe come to oud Yusuf without going through that progression, without starting at Tom Ford or Versace 
or whatever it may be and working their way up to the artisanal brands, they may smell this and they may be a little bit confused, okay? Because here's, when I first smelled this, the very first thing that popped into my head is that this smells like a complete perfume. This oud oil, which is a singular oud oil distillation, the only true ingredient in this is oud, okay? So Thai oud, trot oud, um, and it's a very distinct oud process that they use. So they actually um, did a, uh, uh, a process where they did not cut the tree down. So they made like, if you, if you go to YouTube and um, look up Ensar Oud, Oud Yusuf, you'll be able to see him walk through the forest where they distilled Oud Yusuf and the harvester of the trees sort of cuts the tree at an angle to get the uh, oil out without just chopping down the whole tree, right? So, and I'll, I'll read you a little bit about what they say with the distillation. Um, in the most ethical way possible, they distill the oil, that kind of thing, right? Harvested in the most ethical way possible. But the interesting thing about Oud Yusuf to me is the very first thing that popped into my head when I smelled it, and subsequently I've got a very similar wear each time that I've worn it, is it opens up with a couple notes. Um, mostly it opens up smelling of osmanthus to me. It smells like Oud and osmanthus, but not the fecal barnyard animalic oud. So um, the first thing that I thought of is that it smells like a very fruity oud. And so if you've smelled sort of the oud, I, I recently did a review of uh, an oud fragrance that was created by Peter Carter in the brand of Centauri Perfumes, and it was called Shambo. And this actually uses Ensar's oud in here. Uh, you can go check out my re review. If you're, if you're interested in fruity ouds, or cleaner ouds, or, you know, ouds that don't just smell like barnyard, animalic, you know, fecal, um, fertilizer chips, that kind of thing. You like the fruitier ouds, you like the more floral ouds, check, try to find yourself a bottle of Chambeau. Um, many Thai ouds give off that sort of um, floral aspect. So to me, when I first smelled oud Yusuf, I was like in my head building like a note pyramid, okay? I was thinking, okay, in the top, there's like osmanthus, definitely osmanthus in here. And along with some sort of maybe jasmine uh, and maybe some tea, maybe some like gentle tea notes, maybe some woods, maybe some lilac, maybe some resins, right? And maybe some green touches. Maybe there is a little bit of like vetiver in here. Maybe there's this um, green fruit notes that come forward. Uh, but the osmanthus, definitely the very first thing on my skin when I spray Oud Yusuf is this osmanthus note. And if you know anything about osmanthus, it gives it uh, usually a little bit of this nectarine um, floral-like smell, okay? And um, osmanthus is actually a flower, but it gives off a very um, a, a floral vibe with this peach, nectarine, you know, um, uh, vibe, this feel to it, right? It's actually a flower that has really grown on me as time has sort of gone on. Um, osmanthus as a smell has really grown on me because it can have slightly animalic, slightly leathery, sometimes suede uh, but this very jammy peach apricot nuances, if you will. And the apricot nectarine peachy nuances and Oud Yusuf are like the very first thing that attacks me. And the first thing that popped in my head, Osmanthus, right? Um, and then as the, um, you know, fragrance begins to dry, then you get some of the florals and the more of the spices and the earthiness and stuff like that. But here's the hook. The hook is, like I mentioned earlier, there are none of those notes in this perfume. There are no notes of Osmanthus or uh, peach or jasmine or rose or you know, uh, vetiver or, or lilac or anything like that. None of those notes are in here. It's just oud, right? And that is sort of the hook, I think, that many oud fanatics will go, aha, aha, see? This is a great example of how an oud does not have to be barnyard, fecal, animalic, paint, liqueur, all this stuff, right? It could be beautiful and it could be alluring and it could be cuddly and it could be easy to wear and it could be all of these different things right um and and somebody can appreciate um the perfume that hates oud i think somebody could really appreciate oud yusuf that does not like oud if you just put 
oud under a person's nose, right? A uh, generic oud, let's say the kind of oud you would expect to smell in some of these designer oud fragrances. And then you put oud Yusuf under their nose, they, they, they probably wouldn't even know it was oud because it smells like a true composition. This, this perfume is extremely complex. This oud oil, I should call it. I need to stop calling it a perfume. This oud oil is extremely complex. So like I said, I think what uh, Hari sent me was the Pure Parfum that was released in 2019 of Oud Yusuf, but there was also an, an oil, like just a pure Oud oil that Ensar distilled. There's one on eBay. The guy says it's a 2011 batch, and he's selling it for like 1200 bucks or something. Crazy, crazy expensive, right? Um, and so, on, I'm a little bit torn on this fragrance because on the one side of, of the coin, I can really appreciate um, how rare it is for a single oud oil distillation to be this nuanced and diverse and um, also easy to wear, you know, as a real oud oil. Ensar uses the word pretty in his write-up, and I've seen it referred to as like a cuddly fragrance, like I said. Um, there's pastel hues in this fragrance. It's a, it's a floral, pastel-hued, cuddly um, perfume. But again, it isn't a perfume, it's just an oud oil. So let me read you what Ensar says, and then we'll talk some more about it. So here's what he says about oud Yusuf. He says, natural perfumers have despaired of creating the scent of lilac, of, li of lilies. Lilacs are an even harder note to capture. Perhaps a hint of vanilla with a touch of rose. Some orris butter and violet leaf and sandalwood base is as close as we get. Oud Yusuf smells so much like these sumptuous florals, you'd think it were distilled from lilacs and lilies rather than oud wood. The seductive effort of the florals is punctuated by subtle honeydew and an ever-present apricot that follows the scent all the way down to its immaculate powdered woody finish. And that is the osmanthus I was mentioning, that apricot note. Perhaps the prettiest oud you can wear. Oud Yusuf also ranks as the most flawless orchestration of, no of scent notes I have encountered in single origin oud oil. Subtler than the finest Borneo's buried craze, it combines all the succulent fruit notes you crave in Borneo in its unique Cambodian style, which makes it, for me, absolutely irresistible. What makes Oud Yusuf even more special is it was distilled from 100% organic agarwood trees that are harvested and maintained in the most ethical way possible. That's the way they were cutting the trees I was telling you about without just chopping them down. Our artisan owns a small patch of forest ocularia crossna trees, which he never cuts down. Each morning you see him walking down the forest path with his, with his dog behind him, chisel in hand, looking for the most infected trunks. With a big smile on his face, you see him patiently picking at each trunk, chiseling out only the brown shavings of resonated heart wood. Mindful as he spares the uninfected portion so the tree can continue to grow and yield more agar wood. That just seems like good business practice to me. Because of the care he puts in every step of the distillation process, from the precise selection of the most infected heartwood to the grinding, soaking, and cooking of his oud, he is able to achieve a level of quality, beauty, and sheer perfection in his oil no other distiller can match. And the lilacs and lilies, the honeydew, the apricot notes in his oud all attest to his mastery and love of this craft. <coughs> Excuse me. After at least three years' careful aging, the care and precision that was employed to produce this outstanding aromatic is evident in the resulting oil, an organic oud that stands proudly right alongside Borneo 3000 and many of our legendary wild oud distillations pr from previous years. Um, okay, so there, there you have it, right? That's sort of Ensar's blurb on it. And it's a very well-said blurb. Um, but, so, to me... Um, that opening that they talked about with the nectarine, peachy, apricot, whatever you want to call it, that osmanthus bit that goes, there's a little bit of this woody nuance in the background, but that woody nuance really remains in the background, right? Um, and that's why I say, I think if you're a dedicated Oud follower, you would pick this out as Oud probably immediately, but, um, somebody who is only used to the designer style ouds, they would never guess that this is oud because it really does smell like an entire composition. And what I noticed um, when it comes to something like oud Yusuf is as that opening gives way, there's a point in time in the fragrance where it pivots from that osmanthus note just really blasting off of my skin and, and it feels like it's, it's a big osmanthus note 
um, to more of the spicy floral aspect. The spices really come through for a little bit and then they give way and the flowers seem to sort of start to take over. And what's crazy is, you know, I can see why a perfume like this gets so much attention uh, or why a oud oil like this gets so much attention. And I've realized that with many of Ensar's fragrances, even my all-time favorite Ensar fragrance, which is EO number no. one, dedicated to leather. You can go check out my review of EO number no. one. I ended up getting two bottles of this. I love it so much. Um, EO number no. one focuses on leather and castorium and all of that. But even the oud oils in EO number no. one are not super animalic or super challenging. Um, same with some of his musks that he does. Some of the musk compositions that he uses um, outside of Siberian musk are not super animalic or super challenging. I hear, I haven't smelled them yet. But, um, you know, Ensar likes this style of, of oud oil with the pastels, the florals, the fruitiness, right? I have Russian Adam's disease where... Uh, that's going to be what it's actually going to be called one of these days. The Russian Russian Adam disease where we always want more. More animalics, more challenging ouds and uh, castorium and civet and stuff like that. We always want more, right? More real musk, more of this stuff. And um, But I can understand why a perfume like this that's so pretty and easy to wear gets this much attention. There's a lot of people on YouTube saying, they, oh, they absolutely love this stuff. And for me... I think I'm at the point in my oud journey, if you will, and, and I've really, I'm not going to stand up here and say I'm an oud expert, but I, I have come to really love and appreciate ouds and learn so much about them. I've done a lot of videos on ouds lately. Um, I did one on Kinam's uh, Agar Urzwani, I believe, recently, and you know you can go check out my reviews on Agar Aura, Ensar, um, Ariz La Dore, Bortnikov, and there'll be more to come as well. But, um, so for me, I'm at the point of my journey where something like this, I, I think I've come to the conclusion that I can appreciate how special it is for a single oud distillation to have this sort of a smell and not really have it be my thing, if that makes sense. Um, and, and so if you know my style and loving those challenging fragrances, um, for me, it sort of comes down to, I appreciate getting to know oud Yusuf. And sort of that soft, gentle, smooth um, style of oud. And, um, but if I was going to spend my own money on, on an Ensar or something like that, it wouldn't be oud Yusuf, I don't think, is really what it comes down to. Just because that fruity floral, you know, nectarine, you know, the fruity note almost turns like from peach nectarine to like this melony, like Ensar said, honeydew, I, I believe. Um, so it's like this melony figgy, um, almost like a green mango. It, you know, if you're going to stick with the melon analogy, imagine like a honeydew melon that is that is um, not ripe yet, right? It's not ready to eat. It's still really green. That's the feeling of the fragrance, uh, of the, of the um, succulent uh, fruit note, if you will. And then you mix it with the jasmine and the lilac and this powdery mimosa-like smell. And they say vanilla. But I don't think it's vanilla. Like, it doesn't smell like vanilla, like you're probably thinking. You know, if you're thinking like some of the great Guerlains of the past, Shalimar, uh, Spiritus du Blavigny, you're, you're way off course. This, the, the, van, the vanilla that they're talking about is almost just like this general sort of powdery sweetness that I guess is pretty rare to find in an oud oil, but it's offset by... Just the tiniest hint of that bitter oud in the background. I mean, just enough to make it to where uh, you know it's an oud fragrance, right? Um, and, and honestly, I wish it had less of that creamy, soft floral aspect and more of that oud smell, more of that oud wood-like smell, if that makes sense. I mean, um, it's, um, you know, that general sweetness is there. It's a tough way, to, it's a tough thing to describe something that is described as vanilla, but it doesn't really smell like vanilla to me. Um, maybe imagine like smelling the raw vanilla bean. Uh, there's been some fragrances where they've used something like that, where it doesn't come across as the modern sweetness you probably think of when you think of vanilla. And I wish more of that actual woody, oody, sort of traditional note just uh, was not so overshadowed by the uh, floral fruity aspects and it popped and I know many people 
you know, when they smell it, they love the fact that the fruity floral sort of really take over and that's what you smell. You smell the uh, more gentler side of it. But for me, I just wish more of the woodiness just sort of came through. It would be cool if it transitioned more, but this is not a perfume. It's just an oud oil. So um, as the hours tick by, a couple things I've noticed is the spices make a little bit of a appearance and then they pull back. And what takes the void, what fills the void, if you will, is that floral aspect. Um, and that jasmine note, which I know there is no jasmine note, but the jasmine note feels like it turns more honeyed as it continues to dry down. So the fragrance itself, the, the oud wood sort of has this honeyed-like quality to it, almost like, um, I think I saw Brandon from the Therapeutics Fragrance Channel describe it as like a caramel, like a, like a, um, um, like a light caramel feel, right? And um, I can I can completely see that. And this violet note starts to make an appearance. They said violet leaf, I believe, in here. Um, what did they say? Uh, they said, I thought I read violet. Yeah, violet leaf is what they said. But I was thinking more just like violet, the flower, tends to make a little bit of an appearance. Violet can also be slightly powdery with... Um, uh, this succulent fruit that we were mentioning earlier, mixing with the fruits. And, um, you know, as it continues to dry, if I was still creating my, like, imaginary scent period, I would probably put something like elemi or incense in the base along with sandalwood because the incense-y feel that the fragrance gives off feels very lemony and fresh. And sometimes elemi can have that lemony, fresh feel to it. And so... My imaginary note listing is almost like completely complete. I mean, maybe all you have to add is some tonka bean, kumarin, or, you know, geranium or something. And you could have an entire uh, note listing from top to bottom with the way that this fragrance smells. And it actually, what's crazy about Oud Yusuf is for a single Oud oil, it really feels like a composition. I mean, it feels like you're smelling all of these notes, but you're just smelling Oud. And that's what's so, that's why I think some of the Oud heads love this so much is, you know, Oud, Oud Yusuf, they claim to be magical. It's a magical Oud. Uh, I keep hearing them say, and it, for me, it's not a magical Oud. It's an Oud that kind of does like a magic trick, if that makes sense, because it can prove to newcomers that Oud can go down the rabbit hole and really smell like anything. You know, when, when you say Oud can smell like anything and you mean it, here's an example of it, right? Um, so to me, it's like, um, it's, it's, um, they keep saying it's a good first timer oud fragrance and, and, but I don't know, I think almost, I feel like this might be wasted on a first timer for someone who is not experienced in oud. I don't think they would appreciate the subtleties and the nuances of this. I think this is more, even though I think that this, uh, can be, kind of an introduction to what oud can be. It doesn't have to be the fecal barnyard for someone new. I think the people who would really appreciate it are the old timers, the ones who know how rare of a combination that this is from a single oud distillation, um, from a single origin oud oil, to use Ensar's words, right? Um, so then again, you know, I wouldn't consider myself an old timer, but I would consider myself much more average verse than, than, the, than, than the average bear. And I appreciate the nuances in Oud Yusuf. And yet, just because of my personal taste, um, I would probably relegate this to maybe like another late night session one day when I just want to put something on before bed that puts you in this sort of zen-like mood. And... Um, you know, appreciate a rare oud like this. I'll, I'll spray it a couple more times before bed, and but I wouldn't go out and hunt down the oil or the bottle or anything like that, just because this style of oud, and I said something very similar about Chambeau, and that was using a fruity oud as well, is, you know, I, I appreciate it for what it is, but it's just not my thing. You know, it's um at this point in my oud journey, I know enough of what I like, and, and that's not really it. I'm not going to run out and go get a full bottle or anything like that. But I very, very much appreciate getting to know it and wear it. And, you know, just like there's so many fragrances out there to get to know, there's so many different ouds. It's like, you know, 
Uh, it's impossible to keep up with everything, especially when you're just one person like me, but I have an entire army of you guys behind me, helping me, sending me stuff like this with your generosity. So uh, it makes these videos and getting to know these very, very fun. So is Oud Yusuf a special distillation? Yes, it is. Absolutely. 100%. It's a special distillation. It's just you have to kind of know what you're going into, right? Um, and you have to have a nose for this type of oud. If you're not into these fruity, cleaner, floral ouds, you this is not for you. But um, but I really did enjoy getting to know oud Yusuf. Thank you, Hari, for sharing this very precious juice. If you have experience with it, do let me know. Love uh, hearing your thoughts and, and seeing your faces in the comments. So thanks, everyone, for the support. Thanks for watching my late night insight. Cheers, guys, and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.